Hi, what I've got for you today is a demonstration of the best way for manual therapists to assess and treat the glute minimus and medius muscles at the beginning of a bodywork session. Why should I care about the glutes? My client has leg pain, not hip pain. The glute minimus muscle is the number one source of pain in the leg and lower leg. That's why. That's how pain referral from muscle trigger points works. The source of the problem is not where you feel it. Seriously? That's confusing. Yes, but not if you know the pain referral patterns. If you know the patterns, you can find the real source of the pain and treat the right muscles. Then you can be a pain treatment genius with every client, every time. Awesome. Now here's a demo from a real bodywork session featuring the crossover stretch. It's a great assessment of pain contributions from the glutes. I do this with every lower body pain client, whether the pain complaint is thigh, knee, lower leg, ankle, or foot pain. Most lower body pain issues have a glute minimus component. This is so common that the glute minimus muscle has been nicknamed the sciatica muscle in trigger point therapy. Sometimes it's responsible for 100% of the lower body pain issues. Here's a video of me working with a client uh, who's also a coach in the body student. So I am talking uh, to her, explaining what I'm doing. So uh, it's informative, educational for her, as well as helping her with her pain issues. I'll also be adding additional comments throughout this video. So here we go. So here's, here's the first test, really. Okay. <clears throat> this is the crossover. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just trying to limit the movement to the glutes. So I hold your hip down. Okay. And it's this adduction that is going to be stretching the glutes. Uh -huh. So what do you feel as I do this? As I hold her hip down, that prevents the movement from going into her low back. So her hip can't rise up and her uh, lumbar spine is staying stabilized, her sacrum is stable. So all I'm doing is moving her leg. And when I limit the movement to the leg, I'm basically, with that adduction, I'm just stretching the glute minimus and medius fibers. So it's a very controlled and isolated stretch. I'm getting a sensation in my lower leg. Okay, yeah. Like cath area? Or, mm -hmm. yeah. And a little on the outside. Yep. Yeah. So that's that, this is a great test because basically I'm stabilizing your low back by holding your hip down. Okay. And I'm only stretching the glutes okay. and shortening your adductors. Yeah. And I'm doing nothing with the ankle. It's totally neutral. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I, in order to move your, you know, this muscle or your tib anterior, I have to do this. All right. right? Or for peroneals, you know, I have to do this, All right? Okay. But I'm not, and you feel it there, mm -hmm. right? Right. So that is referral mm -hmm. from the glutes. So that's the great thing about this stretch is that you are able to isolate the movement to the uh, glute minimus and medius, and get a stretch for those muscles. And often, when you stretch muscles. That will bother the trigger points and that will elicit the pain referral. Uh, that's very common. It's also very common that a person feels just uh, part of the pattern, not the whole pattern. Here on this diagram is the pain referral of the glute minimus. So where the X's are is where the trigger points generally are that produce this pattern. So this is more of the abducting fibers more of the anterior fibers of the glute minimus, and then they will produce referral pain into the glute max area, uh, but very commonly down the entire leg all the way down to the ankle. And it's common for people to feel just part of this referral pattern, not the whole thing. So someone might only feel it in the upper leg, or someone might only feel it in the lower leg, and they might only feel it in the lateral knee. On the right hand side here, we have more of the posterior fibers of glute minimus. So uh, these more posterior fibers where these X's are, these tend to produce a more posterior pain pattern. So glute max area and then down the back of the leg, down the posterior leg, down the back of the thigh and calf area. A little bit 
on the top of my foot just a little bit for some reason. Uh -huh. Yeah, because that <clears throat> the referral chains. So glute minimus will go here, will go here into your peroneals, tib anterior, uh, adductor, uh, I mean the hallucis longus. Okay. And you'll get it without that. That's, so not that's referral, satellite that's referral. Not, okay. Right. Otherwise, I would have no way to, I mean, this would just be a total mystery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you understand that muscles like referral chains ah. through 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 that whole referral system, then you can then you can kind of figure out where where the source is. It kind of gives a new meaning to trigger point there because you, it is triggering other things. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And that's so, but this satellite referrals, I mean, that's really important in CTB. So satellite referral is um, when one muscle's referral pattern is going over a more distal muscle, and then that muscle then gets bothered and creates its referral pattern. So you have a chaining effect where you can get uh, sensations from referral pains that are far removed from the muscle that you're actually stretching. So it's, it's the referral is chaining through different muscles and they produce their patterns. But if you know the patterns, then you know what muscles patterns are going over other muscles patterns. And you can pretty much figure out what muscle is ultimately producing the, the referral sensation. In this case, she's feeling um, top of the foot pain. So dorsal side of the foot pain. And that is locally from the extensor digitorum longus. So this is the extensor digitorum longus muscle, right? So it's an extensor of the toes. It lives here and its pain referral goes to the top of the foot here. So what's happening is the glute minimus muscle is producing its referral, which is going over that hallucis extensor uh, digitorum longus muscle, and then it's producing its referral to the top of the foot. So um, you can, if you know these patterns and you understand that satellite referral, through satellite referral, one muscle can be a key and cause another muscle to refer its pattern, then you can kind of go backwards and be like, okay, she has dorsal foot pain, top of the foot pain when I'm, when I'm adducting her leg, what could that be from? And it's, you can trace it back to the glute minimus muscle. If she had a dorsal foot pain issue, an active pain issue, and I just treated her local digitorum longus or extensor digitorum longus muscle, um, that might make this pain go away but it inevitably, it would come back probably pretty quickly, within a day or two probably, um, because the, the source is really, is really the glute minimus muscle. So if you don't treat the source muscle, the relief doesn't stay. What do you feel here? Uh, more on the top of my leg too, on the outside top. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So basically, if I, when I and bring And of course, a little bit here. A little there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I am stretching that. Mm -hmm. um, so that I always do this test like the leg low, mm -hmm. and also I come up a little higher, mm -hmm. because that puts the stretch into different fibers. So oh, the higher, okay. I, the more flexion I put you into, the more of the posterior. I'm getting a little bit in the back of my leg now. Okay, yes. Yeah. That's, so usually the posterior glute fibers refer to the posterior. Okay. Not always, but. With more flexion of her leg that puts the stretch into more of the posterior fibers and then stretching the posterior fibers creates more of this posterior pattern down the back of the leg and that is very common and okay so and this also gives me a benchmark of where you like i'm trying to memorize what your angle is here uh -huh. when you're starting to feel that okay So that's what makes this uh, such a great assessment is because I am able to isolate the stretch to the glutes. And now I'm going into, oops, going into doing some more body work. So right there I was doing some work with my heel into the anterior glutes and the TFL, working them into short, we would say. 
Uh, so I'm shortening them with the compression. And then, uh, then I will move to the posterior glutes by treating them with the hip over the knee technique. So that's getting compression on the glutes um, while I shorten them. And this is a great sequence. This is part of the lower body CTP protocol. This is a great sequence for treating the glutes initially in supine. And the next part will be, uh, I will come into a crossover stretch again, but this time as a resolving stretch for this work that I've just done in the glutes. And I will do it uh, using contract relax. Okay, now go ahead and push out into me. Yeah, good. Hold that inhale. So part one of contract relax stretching is she will contract the muscle, usually 10 to 20% effort, just enough to engage the muscle. She will hold that contraction with an inhale for five to seven seconds. And then, then she will exhale and relax the muscle. And then, then I take her into a passive stretch. And exhale, let it go. Okay, what do you feel? Um, maybe just a teeny bit on the outside of my cat. Okay, so it's we've already improved the range and like took down the referral to something. So you can see that that was quite an improvement in range of motion and with less of the sensation, she was getting a bit uh, in the lateral leg at, at the end of that stretch. So that shows that many of the trigger points have been reduced and resolved in the glutes through that work on the glutes. Now we jump to the end of the session after I did more work on her adductors, glutes, QLs, then I'll come back down and, and uh, I'll use the crossover stretch again as a resolving stretch at the end of the session. And I'll, I'll do a contract relax style again, but this time I'm going to add vibration. So using contract relax stretch with adding vibration is a really great way of treating trigger points because what you're able to do, the vibration enhances the contract relax stretch. You're adding a neurological distraction while you're stretching and that masks the habitual pain response from these trigger point fibers that are going to stretch and it lets you take them into a further stretch that will further reduce the trigger points in those fibers. So I'm letting her hip ride up here because I don't have enough hands to hold her hip down as I use the tool and uh, and move her leg. And I'm not so concerned. About, I'm not using this as a, as a test or as an assessment really anymore. I'm using it as a resolving stretch and it's much better for me to use the vibration to get some extra resolution of trigger point fibers rather than holding down her hip. So there's still, she's get, still getting a strong stretch on those glute fibers. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Please drop a comment and let me know what you think. We also have a free training available with more in-depth info on our coaching the body approach to pain treatment. It's linked in the description. Thanks for watching.